Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. I want to bring out a beautiful scripture. We are in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, which says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing means don't worry about anything. The Lord's nearness leads Paul to forbid his readers from worrying. This is not an invitation to dismiss legitimate concerns, but we as Christians should not go around wringing our hands in worry. Worry is lack of faith. We should trust the Lord in every aspect of our life. Supplication means petition. Prayer should not be just a time to request things of God that we want in everything, in any manner of life. The way to be free of anxiety is to be prayerful about everything. While God is eager to hear our requests, they are to be accompanied with thanksgiving. We should go to him in prayer, thanking him for what he has already done for us, thanking him for what he's going to do for us. We should praise him for who he is and then make our requests known to God. God is loving, and he will give you the desires of your heart if you love him as he loves you. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Because the Lord is at hand and is about to return, believers should set their lives and thoughts in certain ways. And that's what we're talking about, intimate return. We need to live our life knowing that Jesus can come at any time. We live that different life like a, a job. When I was younger, when you had a job and it was a slow period, you grabbed a broom, you grabbed a rag, you did something. You, you kept busy. That's what we need to be doing now. As we wait for the Lord, we know he's going to come back at any time, but we need to be still be about the Father's business, doing what the Lord wants us to do. When you live your life like you believe Jesus can come back any time, you live a different life than those who think that, oh, well, I've got plenty of time. I can go in the world and I can get drunk and this and that. Paul begins with a contrast between anxiety and prayer. He notes believers should not be anxious about anything. This does not imply a complete lack of concern. Nor does it mean Christians are to be careless. Instead, it means that we as believers should not be fearful, paranoid, or uneasy. Why? Because we as believers can speak directly to God, the maker of heaven and earth, who has all power and authority, who is in total control of the situation. Instead of anxieties, we as believers are to humbly and gratefully approach God with whatever is on our mind. Mature prayer includes thanking God for what he has done and what he's going to do, in addition to asking him for help in our areas of need. This is a Christian's prescription to reduce anxieties in all areas of life. This does not mean that believers are going to live a worry-free life, though. Nor does it mean additional help won't be required. However, it does show that addressing problems in our lives should begin with prayer. Do not worry about anything. These words remind us Christians that the Lord is always with us. Christians should pray about everything. God's love desires what is best for us. His wisdom knows what is best for us. Every prayer should include thanksgiving, a thanks to the Lord. We should believe that he will give us the best answer for us. It may not be the answer we're looking for, but it's always going to be exactly what we need. See, this is such a beautiful scripture. For those of us who have called on the name of the Lord, we may be going through something right now. And we've been talking about that for the past week or so. This verse right here is just telling us, whatever you may be going through in this life, because like I say, we have roller coasters in this life. Sometimes we're low down and it feels like we're about to hit rock bottom. Sometimes we're high up. Life is going good. Sometimes there's an unexpected turn, this life's going good, and all of a sudden something just comes along in that next turn. And we don't know what to do. We don't know where to turn. We need to cry out to the Lord. 
Well, we're going through something. We don't even go. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do. I, I can't do it. Just go to the Lord and say, Lord, I need help. Lord, I'm going through something right now. I don't know how to get out of it on my own. I need you, Lord. And then we thank him. Like we talked about the other day, one of the important things about prayer is to think about other people. Another thing is to thank God for what he's going to do in the situation. Thank him in advance for him getting you out of that valley. Thank you, Lord God. I know you're going to deliver me out of this. See, this is the hope that we have, that we have a God who is right there beside us. He will never leave us or forsake us. Whatever we are going through, we don't need to be worried. We need to come to him by prayer. Make our supplications and thank him for what he's doing in our life, for what he has done, for what he's doing, and for what he will do. Let your request be made known unto the Lord. But as we've said, for those of you who don't know the Lord, maybe you're playing games, maybe you intellectually know who Jesus is, maybe you know what he did on the cross. But you don't understand what it means for you. You don't understand the grace that we've been talking about the past few days. And you don't know that whenever you're going through something, that you have a companion that will be right there with you, that will hold your hand and lead you out of it. That's why we share the gospel in every video. It's not to waste our breath. It's what we're here to do. If I didn't share the gospel at the end of every video, if I didn't give you the opportunity to know who Jesus is, then I wouldn't be doing my job. Because as I said, when we talk about the intimate return of Jesus, I believe the rapture could happen at any moment. But that's not the whole point of talking about the intimate return. The whole point is the Bible's clear. It's that we're not guaranteed that we'll live tomorrow. So we need to come to Jesus today. Live like he could come in the next few minutes. That means not putting Jesus off till you're financially secure, till the children are out of the house, or whatever excuse you may be using. And it doesn't matter what you've done. A lot of people say, well, if I go into a church house, the ceiling will fall down or lightning will strike the building, whatever it may be. We all sin. There's not a single one of us that's perfect. There's only been one person who's ever came to this earth that's been perfect, and that's Jesus. Everybody else, sinners. And I don't mean that as a way to condemn anybody. We all are. There's not one of us that's perfect. And if people think they're perfect, then they're deceiving themselves. The Bible talks about that. If they think they got it all figured out, that they're perfect. The Bible says they're deceiving themselves. And call him God a liar. So, we share the gospel to give you the opportunity to know who Jesus is. To know and understand what he did for you on the cross. To understand the grace that was given to you. You know, you may not actually know who he is. You may know what he did on the cross. But you never take the time to talk to him. To get to know him. You don't pray or read the Bible. But I want to introduce you to Jesus right now and tell you. That the gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall. From Genesis chapter 3. Sin entered the world. Sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages, the punishment for sin is death, meaning because of our sin that one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There is a punishment for sin, and because of our sin we all deserve this punishment, and we are all destined to destruction, which means we are all destined to hell for our sins. But God loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, who left the heaven, became a flesh and blood human, fully God, fully man. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. On the cross, Jesus became sin for us to pay for our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put our sins on himself. Jesus took the punishment for our sins that we deserve, took our punishment in our place, so that when we believe the gospel message and are saved, then we put on Jesus' righteousness. Because we like a garment are stained with sin but when we accept jesus as our lord and savior then we are washed clean with the precious blood of jesus washed white as snow and now when god looks at us he doesn't see our sin now god sees jesus the gospel message is that jesus died for our sins was buried and rose again from the dead on the third day and if you confess jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that god raised jesus from the dead then you will be saved whoever believes in jesus will have eternal life for whosoever shall call the name of the Lord will be saved. Saved from what you may ask? Saved from eternity in hell. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. There are not multiple ways to get to heaven. No one else can save you. A preacher will not be able to save you. Your mom, your dad, they won't save you. Your works, your deeds, they can't save you. Salvation cannot be found anywhere else or in anyone else. 
Salvation can only be obtained by Jesus Christ because Jesus' blood is the ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins, took our punishment. Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not just saying words, you're not trying to please someone or looking for a good idea, have a free card, but you really believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live from now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it. Because we cannot earn our way to heaven. We cannot be a good enough person. We cannot do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity or that you think that you're a good enough person, that you never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. Lest any man should boast grace, meaning an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We don't deserve it. Meaning that we cannot earn our way to heaven. We don't even deserve to go to heaven, but God loves us so much that he made a way. And all we got to do is accept what Jesus did on the cross for us. And we always follow the gospel with the warning of Jesus' is in return. Because right now, you can personally know who Jesus is. But one day soon and how soon, we don't know. But complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts it. The shadow of the tribulation is so big right now. We can barely see light around it. And one day soon, the restrainer who is holding all hell back will be removed. Then the tribulation will begin. It'll be a time of terrifying supernatural events. Scarier than any movie you've seen or nightmare you ever had. Each day will get progressively worse. It'll be literal hell on earth. It is coming. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page. And I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now, before the tribulation, we are under the age of grace. Which means right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross. And surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And then it will be the hard way, and you'll have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You'll have to die for Jesus. But I love you, and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. Because one thing is sure, the Bible's clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow, and even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive, but the point is, is that the end is here. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him while you still have the time. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer. There is no guarantee you will live to see tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. But these are just templates, an outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. These words are not even important. But if you would like to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart that you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. You are admitting you are a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus, and you will repent of your sins, meaning you turn away, have a change of heart, a change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, the Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, and change you if you let him. I pray you guys know this, but never take my word for it. Because no one on this earth has the answers you're looking for. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world, they do not have the answers. Only God does, and you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or listening to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture. They can't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus for all and believe for what he's doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries or stay in the clouds.